The Fat Controllers Railway has a decent variety of mixed traffic tender engines. Being mixed traffic means that they are built to handle both goods and passenger trains. There is Edward, for instance, who runs his own branch line. With Boko's help, of course. There's James, who's more known for despising goods trains. Donald and Douglas, the most versatile engines you'll ever meet on that railway, who help on the Little Western, Edwards Branch Line, and the Main Line when needed. And then there's Neville, Molly, Rebecca, Henry, etc., blah, 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 moving on. And lastly, there's Cameron and Rachel, the other two red engines that work on the Main Line. They both enjoy their lives on Sodor, but as some engines do, tend to feel adventurous whenever they spot an unrecognizable area. This happened to be the case one morning when Cameron puffed excitedly into the yard with a spring in his puff. What's gotten you so excited, Cameron? asked Jinty. The fat controller has asked me to take a train of supplies to the station by the lake, which is on the Pilgodrid branch line. Oh... Uh, not trying to be rude, but what's so special about that? Has there been new activities there? I have no idea, honestly. I've never been down that line before. That's what's exciting about it. I've always been curious when I pass the Kildane. Well, Cameron, Douglas added as he puffed in. Keep your eyes peeled, or else you might miss young wee engines on the mountains. Engines on mountains? Engines can't climb. Ah, you'll see, said Douglas as he puffed away, leaving Cameron feeling even more curious. Ooh, now I'm really hyped. Does my train happen to be ready? Oh yes, follow me. And the two engines went off. In a matter of time, Cameron was out and away with his trucks. Right before he reached Kildane, he was sent along the lines to his left, which turned away from it. It's new territory from here now, old boy, called out his driver. Cameron had a wonderful time. He took in all the beautiful sights, and even passed the station with weird-looking non-existent tracks with a weird teeth-like rail in the middle. I wonder what that's all about, he pondered. Soon he had arrived at the final station on the line, Pale Godred, where he then turned around and headed back to the big station. He told Rachel all about his experience, and then after that station, I passed some bridge, and I'm positive I saw rails on the top of it. Rachel was amazed. Oh, you are lucky that you get to see that cam. The newest line on the island that I've ever been on is the Harwick Extension. Hmm, tell you what, we can switch jobs tomorrow evening. What train would you be taking then? Uh, the Midnight Goods, I'm covering for Derek. All right, you could take my next supply train that heads up the branch. Oh, thank you, that'd be lovely. The crews discussed the switch, and it was arranged. All they had to do now was wait for the next night to arrive. Once it did, Rachel set off to the yards. Oh, uh, hello, Rachel. I thought Cameron was taking this train. Oh, well, he let me switch jobs with him tonight. Oh, I see. Well, your train's ready to go. Thanks, Philip. And so she set off into the night. Rachel made good time and was soon approaching the junction to the branch line. What she did know was that she was supposed to turn off at the junction. And because she wasn't familiar with the route, she kept on going at her fast pace. Whoa, girl, we need to slow down. Huh? What do you- Oh my! Rachel's driver slammed the brakes and shut off steam. He was lucky that he had done so and he did. Rachel slithered to a standstill right on the crossing. She was relieved, but there was more to come. Suddenly, she heard a faint. Oh dear. Headed towards them was Gordon with his evening express. Quickly reacting, Rachel inched backwards, pushing herself and the heavy train clear of the crossing. Almost there. She was just in time. Phew. 
That was close. I think that was a sign for us that we should be on our way. Agreed. And once they were sure that the line was clear, a cautious Rachel and her crew set off down the branch line. Meanwhile, further up the main line, Gordon was fuming. That daft engine, not watching where she's going and putting my express at risk? <laughs> Typical. Oh, never mind, Gordon, comforted his driver. We should be fine for the rest of the journey. If you say so, driver. Further up the line, at the old works outside Croven's Gate, Cameron was scurrying around shunting trucks bound for Barrow. He knew he had to clear the line for the express and was rushing, and wasn't exactly being as careful as he should have been. I wouldn't have to deal with all this rushing about if I was allowed on that branch line. Oh, good evening, Cameron. What's on your mind? Ah! Oh! Oh, crumbs. You might want to move. Huh? Eh, come on, get moving. Get out of the way. Oh, I can't look. Uh, yeah. That was too close. Ooh, sorry if I gave you a scare there, Aeneas. I've just had a bit on my mind. Oh, that's all right. What's up? And so Cameron explained about the Pilgodger branch line and its mysterious belongings. Oh, I see. Well, you must have seen the Coldy Fell Railway. Coldy Fell? Is he alright? <laughs> I'll explain everything. Four minutes later. Oh. Throughout the next day, whenever Gordon noticed the two siblings, he would get their attention and remind them to focus on their work, much to their annoyance. Finally, it was becoming night and Gordon was due to take his evening train. Little time had passed when a workman walked up to them. Edward's been delayed at Brendam and won't make it in time to depart with his evening branch line train. Can one of you two take it? Rachel volunteered and set off. That means I'm taking the midnight goods, I assume? If you could, then please. All right, will do. When Rachel backed down onto her train, Gordon was there waiting. Oh, good evening, Rachel. Make sure you... I know, I know. I can pull trains without a babysitter, you know. Gordon grunted. Hmm. Well, I shouldn't expect any more mishaps with late goods trains, correct? Yeah, yeah. And without another word, the guard blew his whistle and Gordon set off. Rachel thought she had heard a strange clunking noise coming from the big engine, but shrugged it off. And then she departed for Brendam. She had no mishaps, however, she kept thinking about that noise she thought had come from Gordon. She traveled swiftly down the branch line and even made it to Brendam early. Thank you very much, Rachel, Edward said gratefully. Sorry I couldn't make it. Oh, pfft, it's fine. And while I'm in steam, I think I'll refill on coal and head up back to Natford. I think I might be needed. Time had passed and it was approaching midnight and Gordon was on his way back to Natford. What he did know was that Rachel's suspicions were justified. The clinking had become louder and his crew became concerned. You alright up there, Gordon? Of course, I'm perfectly fine and functional. There's nothing to stop me now. Right after he said that, an enormous thud was heard. His driver shut off steam and applied the brakes quickly. Well, that's done it. I'll run to the next signal box and call for help. Oh, the indignity. To Gordon's surprise, his driver only came back a couple of minutes later inside Cameron's cab. Oh my, what happened to you? I've broken down. Hmm, what a shocking mishap. Oh well, I'll see what I can do to help. Be right back, don't go anywhere. Ha ha, very funny. Cameron quickly made his way to the next station, which was Wellsworth. He found Boko and s explained the situation. Boko, who was happy to help, took on Cameron's train. Cameron was turning around when Rachel puffed in. I saw Boko taking your train. What's going on? Oh, you'll never believe it. Oh, finally, help has arri arrived? Yeah, you're welcome. Lord, give me strength. Well, Gordon, 
I think we happen to be the lords in this scenario. We're certainly the ones with the strength. <laughs> All right, Rachel, let's take this train home. The engines were coupled up, and pulling hard, they managed to pull Gordon and his train all the way home. By the time they arrived, it was late, but only by a couple of minutes. Sir Topham Hat was there waiting for them. A very fine piece of work. Cameron and Rachel, I am most pleased with you. He paused impressively. As a reward, he continued, I have decided to let you two have the Pilgadja branch line to take charge of. The work needing done there has proven that it needs an engine or two. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And I suppose it's off to the works for you first thing tomorrow, Gordon. Cameron, can I trust you to take him there? I'd like to have my finest express engine back in action ASAP. Hmm. Cameron and Rachel took great pride in working on the branch. They felt very proud. Gordon was repaired and apologized to them for his attitude and all was forgiven. The two engines never found work boring and even met some mountain climbing friends. Oh, so this is what Douglas was talking about. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're sure to like it around here. I can fill you in on everything if you'd like. You know, Rachel, I think we're going to like it here. And indeed, they did. And indeed, they did the end. Uh, uh, sir, what kind of English is this? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot you can't read. Get toasted!